Tammy Williams' essay, Jermaine Duloc, A Cinema of Sensations, delves into the remarkable career and contributions of French filmmaker Jermaine Duloc. Williams' analysis offers a comprehensive exploration of Duloc's pioneering work in the early 20th century French cinema, focusing on her unique approach to filmmaking and her role in advancing the possibilities of visual storytelling. Germaine Duloc, a prominent figure in the French avant-garde cinema, was a trailblazing director and writer during the silent film era. Williams' essay begins by contextualizing Duloc's work within the historical and cultural backdrop of her time. Williams highlights that Duloc's career emerged during a period of significant artistic and intellectual transformation in France, coinciding with the avant-garde movement's rise. This context is crucial in understanding the innovative nature of Duloc's films and her departure from conventional narrative cinema. Duloc's cinema is primarily characterized by its emphasis on sensations. Williams argues that Duloc aimed to engage her audience on a sensory level, transcending the limitations of spoken language. Through her films, Duloc explored the potential of visual and auditory elements to evoke emotions and convey meaning. Her interest in synesthetic experiences is exemplified in her 1928 film, The Seashell and the Clergyman, which employed dreamlike imagery and surreal juxtapositions to create a visceral impact. Williams further explores how Duloc challenged the gender norms of her era by asserting her identity as a female filmmaker. In an industry dominated by men, Duloc was a pioneering force, carving her own path and contributing to the burgeoning feminist movement. Her works often examine gender and sexuality, addressing issues such as women's autonomy and the male gaze. Williams underscores that Duloc's cinema was both aesthetically and thematically groundbreaking, influencing future feminist filmmakers. One of the central themes of Williams' analysis is the concept of feminine authorship in Duloc's films. Duloc, according to Williams, rejected traditional notions of authorship and prioritized the collective creative process, reflecting the collaborative nature of filmmaking. This approach was in stark contrast to the traditional auteur theory, which emphasized the director as the sole author of a film. Williams argues that Duloc's rejection of the auteur theory was a deliberate move to challenge the patriarchal structures of the film industry. The essay also examines Duloc's interest in the visual and spatial aspects of cinema. Duloc experimented with various techniques, such as superimposition and double exposure, to create innovative visual effects. Her films often presented abstract and symbolic images that invited viewers to interpret them subjectively. This aesthetic approach, as Williams notes, aligned with the broader trends of the avant-garde movement, which sought to break free from conventional storytelling and engage with the audience's imagination. Williams also highlights how Duloc's cinema was deeply intertwined with her political and social beliefs. Duloc was a committed feminist and leftist, and her films often carried socio-political messages. For instance, her film, The Smiling Madame Budette, 1922, critiqued the oppressive nature of bourgeois marriage, challenging traditional gender roles. In conclusion, Tammy Williams' analysis of Germaine Duloc's cinema provides a rich and insightful exploration of the filmmaker's groundbreaking contributions to early French cinema. Williams emphasizes Duloc's innovative approach to cinema, her role in challenging gender norms, and her rejection of traditional authorship. Through her films, Duloc invited audiences to engage with cinema as a medium of sensations, pushing the boundaries of visual storytelling. Her legacy as a pioneer of feminist cinema endures, and Tammy Williams' essay serves as a valuable resource for those interested in the intersection of art, feminism, and cinema history.